All right, friends, it's Pete Caleb again with you for part three of this series following my epic road trip from the East Coast out to Yellowstone National Park, 6,000 miles in total. If you haven't already, I encourage you to watch parts one and two of this series that go through general trip planning and then how to road trip in an EV. Today's episode is going to be short and sweet. We're going to go over the packing and the hows of my adventure right here. This pile is everything I'm bringing. I leave in just a couple of days and I'm about 90% packed. If I had to, I could leave in an hour and I'd be perfectly fine. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Or rather, this large tire sitting in my garage and answer the what, the why, and the seriously? What? It's a full-size spare tire. I had it made up for the Model Y. I bought a one-off wheel from TireRack.com and a good but not great tire from my local Mavis shop that is both speed and load rated for the Y. I bought a scissor jack and a 19 millimeter socket to go with the tire plug kit I already carried in the three. Why? Because EVs, especially Teslas, don't come with a spare tire. In fact, many newer non-EV cars don't come with a spare or even a donut. Some come with just a can of fix a flat Side note, you can't even use that gunk on an EV which has foam sound bending. This spare tire is a decent one. It has the proper load rating for the Y, which weighs in over 4,500 pounds empty, and I can drive it 80 miles an hour for as long as I need to, something you simply can't do with the donut. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. If I get a flat tire in Montana, South Dakota, or Wyoming, I can't begin to imagine how long it could take for Tesla service or AAA to come to my rescue. And even if they towed me to the nearest repair shop, maybe 100 miles away, how long will it take to get a new tire in the proper size? With this spare, if I get a flat, I can self-rescue and be back on the road fairly quickly. This is about survival and not losing two days stuck in some random town in the upper Midwest waiting for service, something a Tesla friend of mine had to do a couple of years ago on a similar trip to this one. The goal here is to never use it, and if I wasted money, I will consider it simply an unused insurance policy. So let's leave this seat and go for a walk as I introduce you to the Model Y. Let's start our tour of Tesla storage with one of the sexier features, the frunk. It is incredibly generous storage. You can see how deep it is. And we'll show you in a little bit. This is usually where I keep my canting gear and things that get wet and muddy so I don't have to worry about tracking them in the car. The Y has a power lift gate. So first of all, you'll notice it's a hatchback. The three is a sedan, so it doesn't have quite the same storage availability. There is a shelf that normally goes across here. I don't know if I'm gonna travel with it or not, but it's a very large space. I used to drive a Subaru Outback. It is not quite as large as that, but it's pretty darn good. But we also have this, which you will see in a minute, we are going to take full advantage of. And on the side wheel wells, we have a ton of space as well. So let's look at this pile and see how are we going to get it all in. From a pure logistical point of view, first thing we have to load up is this third trunk. Things that are going to go in here are the things that we don't plan on needing at all or for very specific points in time. So what's going to go in here is the jack all the repair tools we need uh, in case of an emergency, and my motorcycle gear, which is kind of bulky, but we have a very specific point. We're gonna use it in Idaho, so we can come back here, get it, put it away, and this way it's out of the way for the rest of the trip. So let's go load that stuff up. On one hand, my motorcycle helmet is the most rugged item in here, but it's also the one I care about. We're gonna protect that a little bit with my jacket. This scissor jack is pretty large, so let's get that in here. And all the pieces that need to go with that. This here is a battery operated air inflator, tire inflator. And this here is my 
charger. In case we stop at a campground that has a 240 outlet, I can charge it up. This is a tire plug kit. Again, in an emergency, if I get a flat, I can pu plug the hole get right back on the road. This here will be my camping motorcycle pants, camping uh, sheets and blanket for the car, and a tarp for outside the vehicle. I think I spent everything we need down there. We have very specific uses for those items, and if we need them, we're going to be able to get access to this. Now let's load up. I think we should put the spare tire in first because it is the biggest and everything's going to have to work around it. Now for now, I'm just going to put the tire in the car. But I've got a bunch of cardboard boxes in the garage. What I'm thinking is maybe trying to make myself a box for it, just so that it doesn't scuff anything up or damage anything. The tire's gonna be in here, untouched, except when I'm camping. Because you're gonna see in a little bit, once I get the camp set up, there's not gonna be a place for the tire in the car. The tire's gonna be outside the car when I camp. Let's hope no one steals it. That is big. I've done a pretty good job of packing my bags in a very modular fashion that I know exactly what's in this bag, exactly what's in this bag. All these bags have a very specific purpose so that when I need something, I know which bag to grab. And on any given night or on any given activity, I usually only need one bag. This here is a tent. I'm gonna put a video up right now so you're not looking at me, you're looking at the tent. This attaches to the back of the Tesla and is gonna be the absolute coolest thing for camping under the stars at Yosemite. I don't know if I'm gonna use it more than Yosemite, but I'm gonna use it back here once I return. Car camping in a Walmart parking lot or just hanging out at the Badlands may or may not use the tent, but I have it and I'm looking forward to giving it a shot. And this here is a bag of miscellaneous stuff. I'm just gonna stuff that off to the side. Let's see if it shuts. Perfect. So the front is all about easy access and maybe little loose things. We're gonna put our camp chair up here, spare pair of shoes in case I get something all muddy, frisbee, extra backpack because who knows rain jacket and a hiking hat but I think for now it's pretty much everything that's going in the front the most important items for the inside of the car are going to be the cooler the bags of food we'll also throw in my camera bag my laptop bag and this should be everything I could possibly need during my daily travels I forgot to show a couple of things this here this is the air mattress I'm going to be using. It's custom fit for the back of this car. It gets stored right here in the side pocket. I also have these two bags. This is a dirty clothes bag that's empty now. And this is a bag of games. I'm carrying a Rubik's Cube, vacuum board, deck of cards, things to keep me entertained while I'm out there. Easy peasy. When I stop to camp, whether it's at a campground or a parking lot, I expect it to be pretty simple. I packed in all soft bags, no hard luggage for a reason. I can take all of these bags, there were what, six of them? Put them in the front seats of the car, stack them neatly, and they're not gonna hurt anything because they're soft. This here is the tent. If I'm at a nice campground, I'm gonna use it. If not, maybe I'll just push it underneath the car. The tire is the only thing that I don't know what to do with because I can't sleep with it. I'm not gonna put it on the mattress. I'm not gonna put the mattress over it. But I also, it's worth some money and it could get stolen. At a campground, unlikely. But you know, if a Walmart parking lot in the middle of nowhere, who knows? So what I'm planning on doing is I have a couple of bike chains. So I'm gonna run them through the spokes here and then maybe either attach it to a tree or maybe just attach it to one of my wheels that I have here. Someone wants to go through the trouble of cutting the lock, steal a spare tire, more power to them. 
but it'll just give a little bit of hesitation if someone wants to try to take it. Um, but other than this spare tire, camping is going to be super simple. Just empty this all out, and this air mattress inflates in seconds with this inflator that plugs into the 12 volt jack right here. Literally took seconds to, to get the, the mattress up when I tested it out. I'm, I'm not going to set it up right now, but here's a picture of me laying on it when I tested it a couple of days ago. I am super happy with how I've got this thing loaded. I'm actually thinking of leaving it all in here. Maybe I'll take the electronics inside, but I don't need any of this stuff for the next few days. So this is it. The last time you're going to hear from me in the state of New Jersey, the next time you'll hear from me is when I check in after day one. So hit subscribe, hit that notify bell. I'm going to do my best to upload a video every day so you can follow along with me on this most of excellent of adventures. Cheers.